everyone. Coach Sullivan here again with MGS Coaching Football. To my subscribers, I thank you. And to those who haven't yet, I hope you do. I just finished my 38th year coaching football, which I was a defensive coordinator. But over that time, I've also been an offensive coordinator, special teams coordinator, longtime head coach, all of this at both the collegiate and high school levels. Today, in this presentation, I want to share with you one of what we call our rifles. It's a rifle stunt. Okay, and actually it's two. It's slant two or slant away. Okay, so first of all, if you go to my uh, rifle on the whiteboard playlist, you'll see others. This certainly is not the only one, but there's this definite reason why we would choose to run slant. And once I go through it, I can give you that as we get near the end. Okay, a rifle is a run line stunt. Okay. <clears throat> executed by the defensive line. So the key terms that go with that, you have to be able to make it simple for both your defensive line to know which direction to go and the inside linebackers who are directing them as to which direction to go. So for us, two is the designated player or the designated position. So in this presentation, there'll be two different designated positions. Okay, and that is who we execute the lines, the uh, rifle to, okay? Away is the exact same concept, except they're doing just that, going away from the designated position or player. And today it's going to be a position, all right? The lucky Ringo is the call that we make, we being the inside linebackers, to tell the defensive line, lucky, you're going left. Ringo, you're going right, right? L and R. So that's what Lucky Ringo is for. You're going to see that and hear that a lot in this presentation today. What we call gap exchange between the first level defensive line and the second level inside linebackers. In other words, post snap, after the ball snapped and they're executing the rifle, the gap responsibilities change, hence gap exchange. And so that is something that as you install these in the preseason, you've got to really go through it in meticulous detail in your meetings and then in walkthroughs and then on the practice field to make sure that your kids understand exactly what gaps they have so we don't miss a fit, meaning a gap fit. Okay, so the gaps will exchange on the snap of the football, and that's what you got to teach you guys. We just simply say the gaps exchanged, okay? What we mean by a pinch step, that's a technique that's part of our defensive line's everyday drills. Okay, it's going to involve them stepping with their uh, foot that they, in the direction they're going. So if it's a lucky, their left foot. If it's a ringer, their right foot. To the near hip of the next offensive lineman as they gain depth. Okay, so it's not a point the toe at the hip. And it's not keep the toe exactly north and south. It's somewhere in between, and we don't get too hung up on that, okay? Because if they point the toe, they tend to turn the hips and they get too flat. If they keep the toe exactly straight up, they don't necessarily step at the hip, so they're not getting enough width. You follow me? So we just say kind of split the difference. And then once they understand why it is they're doing it, getting to the hip so they can re read and react to the hip, then that usually works out. The peel is a play side pursuit. We're going to give you just one time, one scenario where the play side uh, lineman's going to have to peel. P, play side pursuit. B, bend, backside pursuit. Okay, utilizing... Um, the same blocking scheme will show you the play side defender and the backside defender and what the coaching points are. Okay? So what I have up for you here is I got four diagrams. The top two are what we call slant two. So here would be the call. Here's the front. That's our base three, four, right? Both hands slant two. Okay? When I do both like that, it's a slant. That means the whole defensive line going in the same direction. Okay, that's what the slant is. If I had three arms, I'd use three, but I don't. So when they both do it, that means it's a slant, and that's all three defensive linemen are going in the same direction. So the top is slant 
to the bottom, slant away. And so I usually do it twice. One, two, so they get it. Okay, then it follows with a coverage call, which I'm not going to get into here now. Okay? So what I also have on both the top and the bottom, the left diagram is versus those 11 personnel because the designated position is going to be the tight end. The diagrams on the right, both top and bottom, is going to be 10 personnel, so the designated position is the halfback, the running back. Okay? So with that, let me get into it now, okay? So this would be a slant two, as it says, and it's going to be the tight end. And you got to tell your kids this when you're game planning, and then it also makes it simple to make adjustments during the game and the offense is breaking their own tendencies. Don't ever assume the kids know it's to the tight end because it's 11 or it's to the halfback because it's 10. Okay, there can be things that would make you do it off of the halfback instead. And over here, to a three receiver side, they have a tendency, or to the single receiver side, they have a tendency. Or when the ball's on the hash, calling it to the big field. You see what I'm saying? So it's a position, it's a player. In some cases, it's even big field and boundary. But that's the versatility of our rifle package. All right? So over here, first one, we got slant two. It's going to be the tight end because we've determined that. Tight end's on the left. So they're saying left, lucky. So the defensive line knows they're going left and the snap of the ball. All three. So the ball is snapped. Okay, ball is snapped. So they're all executing, and, I, and it's not perfectly drawn here. They should be. Stepping slightly up like that, I got him taking more of a lateral step. It wouldn't be that way. It would be stepping to the hip, so my apologies. I think I might have been one of the few kids in elementary school that got D's in art and handwriting, by the way. <laughs> okay, so all three do the exact same thing. That's the slant. That's why, right, as I said at the beginning. Here is the gap exchange, right? If I don't call slant, both inside linebackers are 51 technique, which means they got the C gap, right? One, three, five. One, three, five. But see how the gap exchange. Because they're slanting left, now it makes this Mike linebacker 31. He's got the B gap. He and the defensive end exchanged gaps. See what I mean? And so when we teach it and install it in preseason, when we go through it, I make the call. They say left lucky. I say, which technique? So very quick, I say, now here's what I expect. I expect to hear the left, right, the lucky ringle, and then your technique. And I say it to both inside linebackers. So even the guy whose gap's not affected, I want him to say he's 51 still. And every so often, say, so how come? And then here it is. Here's the coaching point. The gap that gets affected is the linebacker who they're slanting to. If they're slanting to you, you, your gap's been affected. Okay, they slant to you, there's a gap exchange. You're now 31. Why is that? Well, be, and make them draw it up. This is how they learn. Well, because he's now in the C gap coach. Okay, bingo. But if you don't do those things, don't assume that, you know, you're up there and talking and you're Mr. Nick Saban and, you know, none of us are Nick Saban. There's only one. So make sure we make them draw it up so it gets solidified in their minds. They understand how their gap's been exchanged with the defensive end. Now they're 31. Okay? So now over here versus 10 personnel, we've told our players it's all off the back. So east, east, east. Equals Ringo, ball snapped. Getting a little bit better with drawing it up the way it would happen. And now he's the 31, right, because they're slanting to him. Okay, they're slanting to him. See, this this consistency here as well. Okay, so now down here, see, we got 
essentially, potentially four different rifles. They're both slant too, but you change the position. It's like a whole different line set because the offense isn't going to know what you're doing. They're just going, oh, my God, they slant this way versus 10, and that way it's like, ah. Okay. So now down here and slant the way, again, we're going to be the tight end. I'm also now going to bring in, okay, the peel and bend and how it would be affected, okay? So right here, we got right, 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 which is going to make it a lucky because we're slanting away from the tight end. So now the ball is snapped. Yeah, see, I'm definitely getting better with my artistry okay no effect 51 he's the one affected 31 right boom so here we go <clears throat> if this were a zone scheme let's say okay to our right so let me draw it up here in red so we got this type of action Okay. Play side. He's stepping, gaining depth as he's reading and reacting to that hip. That hip's coming to him. That's the peel, and I'm over coaching it. But that's essentially what we want. That hip coming to him tells him he's play side. Peel. Right? Play side. Peel it off. Consequently, here, he's stepping that hip. There's no hip that he's stepping to, so he's got to have a little bit of a feel for it. That's the bend. Okay, that's the bend. So if I flipped the scheme, and now the scheme, we're going this way, right? Now... As he's stepping and there's still no hip there to react to, he's still going to peel off because he can feel this hip coming to him, trying to block him. Step here, bend on the back side, close it off, close off those running lanes. Okay, see how that works? The peel and bend. And then the last one versus 10 personnel, it's an east, so it's going to be a lucky. Again, snap of the ball, we're slanting away. And there it is. And the consistency being the inside linebacker, they're all slanting too. His one is the that has the gap exchange. He's got the gap exchange. They're all slanting to him. He's got the gap exchange, which is big. Because if he runs here, there's nobody in the B gap. That can be a problem. Because remember the backside linebacker from uh, previous presentation, angle two, see my rifle play rifle on the whiteboard playlist. His backside gap is defined, so he's he's plugging his own A gap on his side when he's on the backside. So it's not as much of a gap exchange, but it's defined. So he's got to be in the B gap, and if he is, right, all the gaps are protected. C, B, A, A, B. And we'd have an outside linebacker or a safety over here in the C gap. We'd have them all covered. And that's what I mean by your fits will be off if you don't teach your kids the gap exchange concept and make them draw it on the board, make them call it out all throughout preseason. And if you have to, make them do it in season as well in practices, okay, because it's that important. So the slant, why would we run it? Remember I said at the beginning, as we get near the end, I, I told you why we would run to have all three going in the same direction. Well, in the case of a tight end, the reason we want to go to a tight end is if they've got like an 80-plus is what we use, 80-plus percent, they run the ball to the tight end. I don't care if the back is away, pistol, two, they're going to run the football to that tight end. Then we're going to slant all three guys and get them heading that way. I mean, why wait? Right? We're not a read and react. We play one gap, but nonetheless, why wait? Get everybody going in that direction. Okay? A reason 
if a team plays a lot of away, they also play on a pistol. They also play halfback too. So now you have different tendencies. That would be when we would might change it and say 11 personnel. We're gonna we're gonna uh, execute our rifle package off the back. Okay, so when the back's away, they run to the tight end 91 percent of the time. Then we're gonna call it to the tight end when the back's in pistol. They might run it over here more often. Then we're gonna call it away from. So it's based upon both a tight end and a position, the running back. So that one we're just going to say slant. And it's not tour away. It's based upon backfield set. Okay, so we're not getting complicated, but these things factor in. So if the tendencies change based upon where that running back is in 11 versus the tight end, then you might you got to teach your kids – Backs away, we go to the tight. Backs pistol, we go away from the tight. Backs to the tight end, we go away from that. So essentially it's two aways and a two, the tight end, based upon the back, right? So those are the different things and the different reasons why you got to be versatile and how you call it. That would be a reason to call it. If we're in uh, 10 personnel and... Whenever they offset the back, they have a tendency to run zone or, or power read or RPO on the side of the back. Now, we're going to run the defensive lineman that way to give different reads. Okay, make it simpler to, to plug up the gaps, play the run, but also give a different look for the quarterback. Okay, and, and we have uh, – Easier, sounder gap control when we move all three defensive linemen in the same direction. Okay, even for four-year plays at the college level, again, when the bullet's alive and there's all kinds of things that go into a game plan and, you know, your calls, what the opponent does, there's a lot going on. The simpler you can make it, the better for them. Again, to play fast with your feet, you got to play fast up here. Okay. So, again, to my subscribers, I thank you. To those who haven't yet, I hope you do. And to everyone, any questions, please reach out to me at CoachMJSullivan at gmail.com because I would love to talk some football.